Hello everyone, I'd like to start off by thanking my mother and CDKL5 Canada for giving me this opportunity to speak here today. Me and my mom would go through these hour-long conversations about how I felt in the CDKL5 family dynamic, and I never really got a chance to exactly share that with anyone, and it wasn't until she came up to me one night and told me about how she was planning to focus on a sibling's perspective at this conference and asked if I wanted to share my story, and obviously you can imagine my reaction. So that being said, I'd like to start off with a little introduction. My name is Emma Staley. I am Sangeeta Staley's daughter, and I'm a grand, grade 10 high school student at Branksom Hall. And my 18-year-old sister is Tia, who is diagnosed with CDKL5 disorder. There are so many characteristics and stories I can go into to explain who Tia is and what she means to me, but explaining who she is can't compare to knowing her. While battling her everyday struggles with her disease, she's one of the most cheerful and uplifting people I know. There was a time when I would struggle with my sleeping by myself and would sleep, sleep, oh gosh, sneak late at night to her room to sleep with her. Because just her being is just so comforting and homely, it really changes people and the way you view the world, in my opinion. Growing up with Tia, I sort of developed this scenario in my head that she was normal. Whenever my friends would talk about their sisters, I would always chip in, telling them these annoying stories of my sister taking my clothes for herself or pestering me all the time. And it went as far as creating a fake Instagram account and pretending to be her online. I just kept on trying to build something that wasn't there. I wanted to create this fake relationship with her that I knew I could never achieve. In a way, I sort of wanted an older sister that would do these things, taking my clothes and pestering me. And while my school life gave me that freedom to put on this scenario, the moment I got home, it was always a hit back to reality. The late night hospital runs, wondering when mom's coming home, waiting outside my sister's bedroom door for my parents to come out, not realizing they decided to sleep with her to keep an eye out. I guess you could say I was feeling abandoned. These sort of micro traumas sort of built my self image, always asking what about me? I didn't understand so young how my family could be so content with forgetting about me. These conditions of self worth got better as I got older, older, but the matter of dealing with this abandonment has always stuck with me from as long as I can remember. From the age of four till now, I've been spending my life trying to teach myself how to deal with acceptance, trying to deal with how to move on from that feeling of abandonment knowing that my parents loved me and dealt with the situation the best they knew at that time. I remember this one time for my 11th birthday, my family decided to go out for one of my favorite restaurants for dinner. Birthdays were always my favorite type of celebration. It was a day that I got a free pass to accept the attention with no guilt. And it was a day for once the attention I was waiting for that whole year was on me. And so we're sitting at the table, we just ordered food, and I was telling one of my crazy stories about something that happened at school. And I always remember looking around the table and seeing everyone so mesmerized by my story. And being 11, I don't know how amazing it really must have been, but I just remember feeling so happy. That was until Tia had a seizure. And it was a total buzzkill for everyone. My grandparents were upset, my parents were upset, and the whole mood was down. I ran to the washroom crying, my eyes out, and thinking, why why did it have to happen now why did everyone's mood have to change and what about me i wet my tears and i was walking back i noticed that everyone was so cheerful cheerful because tia was better not because it was my birthday and the rest of the night that focus was on the fact that tia bounced back from her seizure i never spoke about this story until now but it was in that moment that it registered with myself that I'll never receive a day or instance where all the attention would be just for me. And at that young age of 11, it taught me something about the real world, that life isn't fair. And it isn't fair for Tia, and it isn't fair for my parents. And it certainly isn't fair for me. CDKL5 isn't fair. Growing up with this constant strain of CDKL5, my parents subconsciously altered my way of thinking to focus on the negatives because they would focus on the times when Tia wouldn't eat, times when Tia would have one too many seizures, the times when she would get no sleep. Instead of focusing on her being in this world, another day, her dancing every time the Beatles songs come on, her laughter when someone says something funny. And after a while, I too start to focus on the negatives in my life, the times when I got a bad mark on a test, 
when I looked bad in that one top I wore, and when I just truly felt alone. There were times when I would lay on my bed crying at night, thinking of how unfair my life is. I thought that there was nowhere I could go but down. I let myself feel vulnerable because I never could, never wanted to give my parents another reason to worry. It just consumed me. I was a walking ache that needed to be pulled out of. And the one person that got me through it was Tia. She taught me through her perseverance to never give up, to focus my life on the positives, and understanding that if what I'm doing for myself is for the best of my abilities, what I'm doing for myself is the best of my abilities, then I have no cause to depress myself with all the things that are out of my control. Learning these valuable life lessons early naturally mature my way of thinking to look at these stories under a positive light. And for that, I am so grateful for those experiences I went through with my family. Forgiving the past and looking towards the future with a promising establishment of independence, understanding, patience, and love. Tia did more than teach me how to handle attention. She taught me the importance of being grateful. Grateful for my being, grateful for my nature, grateful for the privileges I wake up to every day, and grateful for having a sister that is Tia. Due to all of that, I hope all those individuals who have special needs siblings know that they are not alone in what they feel, that they can and should also be heard. But realizing that if you are doing what is best in any way possible is the first step in finding yourself, finding, healing, and understanding. I'll end with a quote by Michelle Panmar. If you always see the negative side of things, eventually that's all there is. Always look for the positive, no matter how small. Thank you.